All right. So I know we're all uh, dealing with separation in many different ways. Uh, we're struggling with that. We're just feeling, I think, the ache and the sting of being apart and being separate. And so I want us to look at a passage tonight that, that reminds us of something that we can never be separated from. And it's in Romans 8. If you want to turn there, grab your Bibles. Uh, on Sunday, I give you the challenge to be reading Romans 8 one time each day this week. I have not done that, but I've done it a few times this week. Uh, but hopefully uh, you are able to dig into that chapter. It's such an encouraging chapter, such great truths for us to remember uh, through this time. And so I'm going to even share my screen here so you can see. There we go. All right, so I'm going to read this for us, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life and is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sakes we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and obviously that's a very all-inclusive list of things that cannot separate us from the love of God. Um, and we can add to that list viruses and social distance and global pandemics. Not even that can separate us from the love of God. Uh, I want to share uh, this. Uh, Paul David Tripp has this devotional, New Morning Mercies. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, devotional that goes through the year as a devotional each each. Uh, each day, and I just want to share his thoughts on this passage because I think it, he does a great job with this. Now it simply defies redemptive logic to allow yourselves at any moment in your life to think that God would go to the extent that he has gone to provide you with salvation and then lose you along the way. If he controlled nature and history, so that at the right time, Jesus came to live, die, and rise again on your behalf. If he worked by grace to expose you to the truth and gave you the heart to believe, and if he now works to bring the events of the universe to a final glorious conclusion, does it make any sense to think that he would fail to provide you with everything you need between your conversion and your final resurrection. Paul is arguing that God's gift of and sacrifice of his son is your guarantee that he will grace you with every good thing you need until you are finally free of this broken world and with him forever in eternity. You do not have to wonder about God's presence or his care. You do not have to fear that he will leave you on your own. You do not have to wonder if he will be there for you in your moment of need. When you give way to these fears, you commit an act of gospel irrationality. If he gave you Jesus, he will give you along with him everything you need. And I think those are wonderful, great reminders for us, especially on these days when we feel... Um, the limits of our ability to cope, our ability to solve problems, our ability to know what is next or have any idea of what's going on in the world. 
uh, we can remember, we can rest in that God's already given us Jesus. That's the biggest, most costliest gift he could ever give us. And he's going to give us then, he's not going to be cheap with us now. He already gave us the big grand prize. So he's going to give us everything we need uh, along with him in order to make sure that his plan comes to uh, fulfillment in our lives and in, in, in everything. Think of the, the lyrics from um, Amazing Grace. Uh, Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we already have come. Uh, it's grace that has brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. Uh, he will bring us safely home, even through the storm, even through all these questions that we wrestle with, that we struggle with, that we just don't know about. He isn't going to skip on us now. Nothing can separate us from his love, uh, not, not anything we're going through with social distancing or the economy or uh, pandemic or anything. And so just I, I wanted to remind you of that, encourage you with that reality. I want to read some lyrics from a, a song, a hymn, uh, He Will Hold Me Fast. I shared this on Sunday in the chat. Uh, just as a link for you to check out, I want to just read the, the poetry of it to you. Some great reminders for us. Um, I first came to know this song at a pastor's conference where there's 10, 12,000 men, mostly men, some pastor's wives there, uh, but mostly men uh, all singing this song. And it was just whenever I read or, or think about this song, I always think about that great choir of men all, all singing this loudly. Um, let me read it. Uh, it. It's again, he will hold me fast. When I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, he will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path. For my love is often cold. He must hold me fast. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so, he will hold me fast. Those he saves are his delight. Christ will hold me fast. Precious in his holy sight, he will hold me fast. He'll not let my soul be lost. His promises shall last. Bought by him at such a cost, he will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast, for my Savior loves me so, he will hold me fast. For my life he bled and died, Christ will hold me fast. Justice has been satisfied, he will hold me fast. Raised with him to endless life, he will hold me fast. Till our faith is turned to sight, when he comes at last. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. Um, just great reminders uh, for us on, on hard days and troubles, sometimes of when we are at, at our limits to know that God, his grace is sufficient for each day, for each moment. Uh, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. I think, too, of the passage at the end of Jude, which reminds us, which promises us to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. He has brought us safe this far. He will bring us safely home. And whatever that looks like in between, he's going to be with us through it. He's going to be right there with us in the midst of it. Nothing in all creation, even viruses, can separate us from the love of God in Christ for us. And that's a wonderful thing to rest in and be reminded of. Uh, so I, I have some things for us to pray for. Let me just stop this here.